excursion. And please do be in prayer, prayer for them, as you can see, quite, the family's quite busy um, and sharing. So and I know sometimes we, we miss seeing them here, but when they're not here, they're, they're going out and, and sharing it. And like he said, it's about, not just about them, but making other people aware of the need uh, for, for missions work and the gospel uh, to be proclaimed in Japan. So let's continue to keep them in our prayers. Let's pray. Gracious Holy Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be here. And Father, just continue to fill us with the awe and wonder of your Son, Jesus, because he's at the center of all that we do, the missions work, the coming together for worship, this, this picnic this afternoon. It's all because of what Jesus has done for us. And so, Father, as we even look to your word this morning, that you would just impress upon us more and more the awesomeness of your Son, Jesus Christ. It is in Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. Uh, one person has once said that uh, if our greatest need had been information, God would have sent us an educator. If our greatest need had been technology, God would have sent us a scientist. If our greatest need had been money, God would have sent us an economist. If our greatest need had been pleasure, God would have sent us an entertainer. But our greatest need was forgiveness, so God sent us a savior. And that's the very thing that we come to celebrate, is the fact that God has sent us a savior. And he came into this world nearly 2,000 years ago, and he was known by the people of his day as Jesus of Nazareth. Today is Palm Sunday, and as the uh, uh, Kevin mentioned the palm in Palm Sunday is there because of the people who brought the palm branches before Jesus as Jesus was entering into Jerusalem uh, for the Passover feast there. But what made this event uh, so significant was the manner in which Jesus had come and the specific timing in which it took place. Because it was the occasion uh, before the last Passover feast and that Jesus would celebrate here on this earth. So uh, let us turn to the passage in Matthew 21 that talks about uh, this, this um, event, which is also known as the triumphal entry. And one of the first things as we uh, look there is that we recognize that Jesus comes into Jerusalem as the Savior King, that Jesus is coming into Jerusalem as the Savior King. Let's read the passage. So it begins by saying, When they had approached Jerusalem and come to Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied there and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them, and immediately he will send them. We notice here that Jesus is, as others at this time, we would call them pilgrims going up to Jerusalem for these various feasts. But this particular feast is the Passover feast. And, and as they're uh, coming, everybody goes up to Jerusalem because it's on, a, it's on a hill. And here it talks about where he's coming from. It says he's coming from the side of the Mount Olives, which I believe is on the east side of Jerusalem and he's making his way into the city. So that's what's going on here. But on this occasion, as they're making their way, uh, Jesus has specific uh, directions that he's giving to his disciples as far as how he wants to go into the city. And those directions are specifically said here about getting a top donkey tied there with it and a colt with her and to bring them to him because he is going to use them. So he has a specific idea of what he's going to do at this place. And it goes on to say, This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet, saying to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, gentle and mounted on a donkey, even on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. And this specific prophecy that Matthew, as he looks at this event, he's explaining to people, this is exactly what Jesus has in mind as he's doing this. And going back to that passage in Zechariah 9.9, it says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Talking about Jerusalem. Shout in triumph, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and endowed with salvation, humble and mounted on a donkey, 
even on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Here it makes it very clear in this passage that's utilized here by Matthew that he is coming as a king and that he is endowed with salvation and humble. So it is very clear that Jesus was presenting himself as the rightful king of the, to the throne of David as he's coming into Jerusalem. However, more important is the matter that he came to bring about salvation for the people. That was his point. And he did this in a humble manner. Now some people might say, well, isn't Jesus getting attention to himself? What part of this is humble? The part that is humble is the, the, the beast that he is running, riding on. Is that it is a it is a donkey, not this great steed. It's not like this, you know, white horse and, and he's coming upon it, you know, like Prince Galilee. You know, that's not the way he's coming. But it's in this humble manner on this donkey, and at that it's a it's a colt. It's it's the, the coat of a donkey that he's coming on. And as uh, Kevin mentioned too, that this donkey had never been ridden by anybody. So it shows how much Jesus has indeed has authority over nature. It goes on saying the disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them and brought the donkey and the coat and laid their coats on them and he sat on the coats. Most of the crowd, notice it says most, not all, most of the crowd spread their coats in the road and others were cutting branches from the trees and spreading them in the road. So the image here is they're taking off their, their clothing and, and lying it down here and if you want to think of it, it's like a red carpet treatment, right? Whenever we honor people, there's usually this red carpet that's brought out. Well, they didn't have that back in, in, in Jesus' day, uh, or at least not in the streets of Jerusalem. So they laid down their coats, they laid down branches to make this carpet, so to speak, that they could walk down and, and it would be uh, to show honor to, to Jesus. And so that's the image that we get here of the people honoring Jesus as he came in through the streets of, uh, up to Jerusalem. The crowd was going ahead of him, and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Again, here there is a messianic uh, psalm that is brought in here that the people are, are declaring concerning Jesus. And they're saying, O Lord, do save. We beseech you, O Lord. We beseech you. Do set prosperity. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you from the house of the Lord. So what they were chanting, what they were saying as they were walking, going before Jesus and after and honoring him as he was coming into Jerusalem was these words from Psalm 118. And the word Hosanna specifically means, O Lord, do save, or O Lord, save us. That is the essence of that word, Hosanna. That it is a declaration of, 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 of crying out to the Lord and specifically asking for salvation. And that is specifically what Jesus did as he was writing in. He came as the Savior King. The second thing as we look at this passage is that we realize that Jesus is a prophet. Jesus the prophet is mentioned. And we see this in the response of the people as Jesus comes in here. It says, when he had entered Jerusalem, that is with all that's going on, with people saying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. That the city, as he's entering in there, the city was stirred. They're like, what's going on? And they were saying, who is this? And the crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Now, for us who live now many years later and we're looking at the passage and we know of Jesus' story, we know that Jesus is more than a prophet. And that's what we're thinking. Jesus is more than a prophet. But though Jesus is the Son of God and He came into the world as the promised Messiah, which means the anointed one, His primary function while on this earth was that of a prophet. And that's no small order because we know a prophet is someone who speaks on behalf of God. And by the people declaring this, at the very least they are saying, Jesus' words carry weight and that they should be listened to and they should be obeyed. And if they would take that logic further, and they truly understood and heard and studied Jesus' words, they would come to the conclusion of who he declared him to be, who is the Messiah, and who is the Son of God. But it's interesting because we see that the people recognize him as a Messiah. Other passages in the Gospel show when Jesus is asking his disciples, who do the people say that the Son of Man is? Who do the people say 
that who I am. That Jesus, uh, that the disciples say, some say John the Baptist and others Elijah, but still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. It's very interesting here because these are uh, talking about uh, people who came before Jesus, uh, at least in the physical sense, came before Jesus, John the Baptist, Elijah, still others like Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But the basic notion or the basic understanding of people was that Jesus was a prophet. That he was sent by God. And then Jesus goes on. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. So there were people in the crowd who truly got it. And some of the people in the crowd who didn't see everything just yet regarding uh, Jesus. But Jesus offered him, showed himself that he is the king, the savior king. That he is a prophet. But also, we will see that Jesus is the priest and the Passover lamb. We come to this conclusion as we will look at this a little further in this passage, the backstory, as you may see, say, but also in what we've been studying in Hebrews. In Hebrews 5, as we just studied, it says, In the days of his flesh, that is, as Jesus was in his incarnation as he came, he offered up both prayers and supplications with loud crying and tears to the one able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his impiety. Although he was a son, he learned obedience from the things which he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became to all those who obey him the source of eternal salvation, being designated by God as a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. We see here the very thing in which Jesus came and that he offered himself up for us as the sacrifice on this Passover day, uh, Passover feast. So although Jesus currently functions as our priest in heaven, yet we know that his priestly work began on this earth as he offered up himself as a sacrifice for our sins once and for all when he went to the cross. Jesus came into Jerusalem on this occasion offering himself as the sacrificial lamb for the Passover feast. The Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. That's the way that John the Baptist pointed Jesus out to John and Andrew on that specific day when they decided they will follow a Jesus. This is in accordance with Exodus 12 as, as we see what Jesus was doing. Most of the people who came to the feast, the feast began on the, what would be the first month for the Jew, in the Jewish calendar what is known as Nisan, Nisan, not Nisan, but Nisan, and that's the 10th day, and that would be the Sunday, that's why we have Palm Sunday, and we celebrate this, but that was the day that they chose the sacrificial lamb. That was the day that they would, they would find an unblemished lamb that they would put aside and keep so that they will slaughter it on what would be Thursday, and that would be the, what they would eat and be a part of their Passover feast. But it was on the 10th day of Nisan, and it was indicated in this passage. It says, Now the Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be the beginning of months for you. It is to be the first month of the year to you. Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, On the 10th of this month, they are each one to take a lamb for themselves, according to their father's households. A lamb for each household. So Jesus was presenting himself as that lamb. It goes on. Now if the household is too small for a lamb, then he and his neighbor nearest to his house are to take one according to the number of persons in them, according to what each man should eat. You are to divide the lamb. Your lamb shall be an unblemished male, a year old. You may, you may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the same month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel is to kill it at twilight. One of the reasons for putting it aside was it was to go through this process of testing and making sure to see that this lamb was indeed unblemished. And that's what Jesus went through on those days leading up to the day that he went to the cross to die for us. Jesus went through examination after examination by people asking questions, trying to test Jesus and trying to uh, see if they could catch him in his words. But Jesus came through all of that. And indeed, he went to the cross, and he died for us. So Jesus is not just the king, the savior king, uh, as he was presenting himself there. And the people declared that he was a prophet. 
But in coming, what Jesus had in mind was that he was offering himself up as the Passover lamb to take away our sins. Indeed, that was the only way in which that we could be saved. To Jesus as the Messiah came as prophet proclaiming God's kingdom. Jesus as the Messiah came as a priest offering up himself as the final Passover lamb for our sins and atonement. And Jesus came as a king of the line of David who offers us a salvation. And so Jesus is indeed our Savior. And that's the question, the question that we are left with is like what the crowd saw when they saw all these things going on. And maybe some of you uh, come regularly. You, many of you, I see you coming regularly. Some of you maybe you come once a year. Maybe you're visiting from out of town. But you're wondering, what is, what is this all about? Why do we celebrate this day? Why do we even come every Sunday to worship the Lord? Who is this Jesus? That's the question that we should all be asking. And hopefully we would come to the conclusion that Jesus is the Son of God, and He is the only one that offers us salvation. But we come this morning to celebrate the fact that Jesus did offer Himself up as the Lamb of God to take away the sin, my sin, your sin, the sin of the world, and that through Him that we might have eternal life. And next Sunday we'll celebrate the fact that He did offer that life down for us as we will celebrate on Good Friday too, and as we celebrate His resurrection. Because without the resurrection, we would be, have a dead hope. Without the resurrection, we would have a dead Savior. But that is not the reality that we live in. We live and we have hope for tomorrow because we have a living Savior. And His name is Jesus. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank You so much for the offer of salvation that is given through a Savior because we need forgiveness for our sins. That because of our sins, if we were left in this state, in the state of just our sinfulness, there is no hope. There is no hope of eternal life together with you. In fact, it's the exactly opposite. Scripture makes it very clear. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have eternal life. That the opposite of not believing in your Son Jesus is to perish, to be forever separated from you. So Father, we thank You that You have given us salvation, and that salvation is through your Son Jesus, who is our Savior. Help us to come to that conclusion as we study your word, as we live each day, that we would put our faith in your son Jesus and be saved. We thank you and pray these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen.